Thanks, so my name is Dan Scholler, I'm with Calibra, and I wanted to talk to you today about data catalogs. And I, I, the title of this presentation is, it's like Amazon only for data. Because the fundamental question that almost any business user has when they start looking at your internal systems, of course, is why aren't they easy to use, right? I can find anything using Amazon, I can find anything using Google, uh, you know, I, it's, it's easy. Why can't I find stuff here? in the organization, why, don't, why, you know, how, how, why is that so hard? Um, and I think you know, part of it has been that th there's a lot of reasons for that. There are technological reasons for it, there are organizational reasons for it, but I think also that it's been, <coughs> there's been a, a, a change in the way we think about what we need to do with data. You know, historically data was something that was a side effect of process automation. It was things that, you know, it was the responsibility of a certain, I'll call them uh, high priests, if you will, to make sense out of the data. And today, there's much more of a sense among everyone that data is valuable, data is useful, and if I can get it into everyone's hands, I can use it. However, so we've, we've tried some solutions to, to this problem, but the solutions have tended to be too narrow, too siloed, too focused on individual, the needs of individual groups or individual problems in order to create a good solution. So what we've ended up with is a process that's just really broken. You know, if I go to search for data, and this, this by the way, is, is an example of something that I have done personally in my own life, in, in, a, in a past life. You know, you, you look for the data, you look for it on the information portal, you can't find it there, you see a bunch of reports that aren't the right thing or they're not accurate enough or whatever it is, right? So then you ask the other people in your department when they get back from lunch, you know, what do you use to find this out? Oh, I don't know, I don't look at that one, I look at this other thing, but it's not the same. Right, you know, that doesn't work. So then I say, aha, I know someone in accounting who probably looks at this same information. Let me call them. I call him and he says, well, maybe that's not the, you know, maybe that's not the, the customer lifetime value data, but maybe it's, um, you know, the account valuation over time and you should look for things that have account valuation in them. They give you synonyms for what you're doing. So you take a look for those. You search the information portal, you know, you look then for account valuation, you discover that there are 953 reports with account valuation in them and that's not very helpful. You can't sort through all of that. So then you, then you call some other contact in IT, right? They point you to a bunch of database schemas that you might want to do. You go back to the portal and look for reports that really, you, we've been here, right? It's just on, it's endless. It's a painful, painful process. And the question is, you know, why is it such a painful process? I mean, you, I don't know what size organization you're in, but you probably don't have as many bits of data on your, uh, in your process as Amazon has products in their, in their view. So why can we not find the data and we can't find the products? A part of it is that we don't have the tools to, to locate information, and part of it is that we don't have enough information about those things to make them easily distinguishable. And this is where the data catalog comes in. The data catalog has got to be a mechanism that provides that same kind of experience, that, that consumer-like, Amazon-like experience for data. It should lead users to knowledge. As you know, what Amazon does for you is it leads you, you know, it always has that nice big button that says put it in the cart, buy it now, right? That's, that's what's there because that's the outcome that they want on, on Amazon. The outcome that you want for your catalog is for the user to have in front of them the information that they need in order to make their decision, to make, create their plan, to do what it is that they're trying to do. So the catalog needs to lead users to knowledge. That means I need to be able to find and provision trustworthy and appropriate information, and I need to be able to also find things that are not necessarily data, existing, existing reports, existing models, you know, um, components of analytical programs, you know, MapReduce jobs, whatever it is. I mean, things that manipulate that data that can help me to get to that outcome. Um, it also has to be more than what's there because there's, a, there's an aspect to the use of data that contributes to the information about the data. The same way that if you see, for example, that one product has a five star reports from, you know, in Amazon it's five stars from 25 users, and another one has four and a half stars, but it's got that from 657 users, I don't know about you, but I typically judge that four and a half star rating a lot higher than I would judge that five star rating. 
right? Because it comes from more people, more people have used it, therefore the aggregate knowledge that they have is going to be more comprehensive about it than not. So it needs to be part of a governance process where we continually collect knowledge about the data and about how the data is used and what the data is for. And ultimately, it also can't be something that's done in a silo. Um, you know, we've seen this, we've seen people try it, and what they end up with is a much sexier list. You know, there's a much cooler list of things to do, it's really great, but you need to be able to give people a means of exploring data outside the world that they're familiar with. You know, you want to you focus them on the, on the data that they're most likely to use, but you have to give them pathways to look at other related information, because if you don't, they're not going to be able to come up with new insight. And you know, the, the, the big step functions in the value of our data and the use of our data come from the places where I'm able to combine information from different parts of the business that weren't looked at in that way before and create new insight from there. Right? And it, the information in the catalog can't just be like a random collection of stuff. It has to be, you, know, you have to be able to identify whether or not this information is trustworthy in the context of what I'm doing for it. Now that definition of trustworthy is going to change with the context, but it, it needs to be done. Um, so that's really what the data catalog is about. Now we, we here at Calibra have looked at what Amazon is actually providing you, and we've done a lot of work with our, our data catalog automation to provide that same kind of capability. And if you, if you break it down, there's really five things that you've got there, right? One of them is, you know, the ability to search with semantics. And part of our system ha our, has semantic models, definitions, business terminology, all those types of things that can be associated with the information and with the data so that you can do that kind of semantic searching and, and create those, those associations. It needs to make intelligent recommendations. Um, and we, you know, we have a machine learning capability that, that uh, identifies what data sets you might be interested in based on the things that other people do, the types of uh, work that they do with data, the role that you have, and, and the other people, who, you know, typical kinds of things. Other people, people who have shopped for this have also shopped for that, right? That's the, that's the, the model. Um, you need to understand something about the quality of data. Obviously, that's, that's, you know, that's a, a primary metric for us to determine suitability. You, and so we allow the organization to aggregate everything that they have about quality from all different quality scanners and custom programs or whatever else you use to do that, bring it together in one place and just view it very simply so a business user can understand it. Um, I need to be able to drill down into the data, right? I don't need to see all the lineage, the entire expanded, you know, every step that it took to get from here to there, but I need to be able to know where did this data come from? You know, who else has used it? Um, are there any problems reported with it? All those kinds of relationships need to be visible to me in a, very, in a very straightforward way so I can know what happens. And finally, I need to be able to access that data. Now, provisioning is more than just the idea of delivering some data to me, right? It's actually, in a lot of cases, it a, a can be a somewhat complex process. I may need to get approval to use this data, right? If I'm provisioning data, particularly if I'm provisioning data to partners or, or customers or something like that, I may need to have them sign a data sharing agreement before I give it to them, right? You know, there's all sorts of different things that may happen there. So um, we need to have a flexible process for managing the provisioning of that data. These are just some pictures of what happens with a catalog here. This is the card view of a catalog. I, uh, we've got a live view over there in our booth at uh, 522, I believe it is, right there, uh, if anyone wants to see more stuff. But you can see this is, this is a recommendations page. It's recommendations up there. You can flip to see the complete set of data sets and filter on that and do all that. But that's, you know, we want to try to drive you to recommendations. We will very visibly flag things that have been through an approval process. Right, so that's, um, you know, if, if you have some type of approval process to say this is the official source of some data, then the, those will show up with those big green flags on. I'm trying to encourage people to use the stuff that they're supposed to use. Um, and you can see that I have other stuff here. So I have another, I have a, another there's a customer name data set that's one of the approval ones, and then I have my own customer data set over here that, that I just created for my own purposes. And that's fine, and that, you know, I probably, that probably will not appear in anyone else's view. Right, because it it's only ever gets used by me and it's it, you know, it may be a subset of what's going on. In terms of that detailed drill down, what you, do, what you get is something like this. I have here, um, a, uh, this is actually a report about customer lifetime value, right, that's part of a sales operations management reporting process that's, that's owned by the operations department. Um, that report ha has information that comes from these 
these, uh, attrib these elements here. They ha all have quality scores overlaid on them in this particular view. And I can change this view up to show anything that I want at, at any level of detail. And then I can see that these things come from the Hadoop system for enterprise, the enterprise technology Hadoop system, except for the customer record, which comes from our CRM system, as you would expect. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, th that data can be expanded. You can get profiling information about your data. All of these things are things that you need to know as detail to understand data to choose the right appropriate things when you find it in a catalog. And finally, um, there's, a, there's a set of things. I'm going to skip over something here because I know we're getting low on time. But for all of that information to be visible to you, the only way that can happen is if there is some kind of governance process that collects that information. And the process that, that really leading organizations take today is one where every time you use the information, you collect more about it, right? So when someone puts it in the system, you ask them a few simple questions. What is it, what is it for, how, you know, how long are you going to use it? Every time I use it, what are you using it for? Why are you doing this? Obviously, there's information you can get that's structural that you can just mechanically pull out. But what you want to try to do is to create a virtuous circle where I discover information, I evaluate whether it's appropriate, I use it in a particular context, I may enrich it for use within that particular context, and then I may, you know, with that enriched data, that report, whatever I built that model, I put it back in the system, I say, hey, this is now a model for doing that, here, here you know, you might be interested in it, so I, I refer it to other people, and then that makes it more discoverable by other folks and, and so forth. You create a virtuous cycle if you can incorporate governance with the discovery and use and cataloging of data. And that's really how we at Calibra believe that this process should work. And if you'd like to see more about that, please come and visit us. Uh, my name's Dan Scholler, and thank you all for listening. Have a great day.